Hey there, horror movie tea sippers. The following podcast episode will contain spoilers for the movie we are about to review. If you have not seen the movie and do not wish to have anything ruined prematurely, please do not continue to watch or listen until you have seen the movie. And welcome to the Horror Movie Tea Podcast. Hello, Sippers! Yes, so we have a second request that we're covering. From our Horror Movie Tea Sipper, Grinna. Yes. And uh, we are covering Blood Red Sky. It's the Netflix... Netflix, Netflix original that came out this year in 2021. I think you've had too much caffeine now. <laughs> I don't think I've had enough. I'm tired. <laughs> but uh, but going on to tea, today I am drinking the... Oh, no. I It's P-U-K-K-A. So, Puka or Paka or Puka. Okay, and it's the Supreme Matcha Green. It's it's uh, it's it's actually if you like bagged tea, this is a really good matcha tea. You gonna be a snob, a tea snob, with the bagged thing? We have bagged tea all the time. You really gonna mention it now? Well, I'm just saying for those who want matcha tea, because matcha is normally a powder. It is, but mm-hmm. it's often mixed with other things. I can't handle you today. Go (laughs) ahead and move on to your tea. (laughs) So I am drinking, once it cools down enough for it to not be lava in my cup, the Bigelow Benefits Stress-Free Rose and Mint (laughs) Herbal Tea. And I chose (laughs) non-caffeine because we've already had a lot of caffeine today. (laughs) Yeah. So. I'm like, never enough. Go ahead. But anyways... (laughs) So, with your summary, <laughs> Blood Red Sky is about a plane that gets hijacked, but you find out that one of the uh, passengers is a vampire. And so it's, you know, it's one of those movies, it's an interesting creature feature to where it's like mm-hmm. instead of the vampire being like, the bad guy or whatever. It's like you're trying to root for the vampire, but it's not like a Twilight Sparkle vampire. It's Thank like goodness. a vicious, like scary vampire. So. Like true original back yeah. to basics horror movie vampire. Yeah, so it was a pretty interesting take. Thank goodness. But so for entertainment. Uh, yeah, you can't cheat off of mine. I don't have them written on here, so ha. <laughs> yeah, well, I was like, I was like, should I like you go first for entertainment, or should I Why go? Why are you first? trying to shake up tradition? You go first. Go on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I would give it a six. Like it, it was a pretty interesting take on vampires and uh, just a creature feature movie in general, where it's like you're not. Or I'm not stuck in here with you. You're stuck in here with me, uh, which was kind of a fun twist. I also thought it was uh, pretty interesting how much, uh, how much of a mixture of German and English there was. Yeah, it's yeah, it is pretty a, much even. It is a Netflix original, and it was originally considered or classified as German for the. The original language. And we did choose that one because it said under the subtitles and everything. Original. German. Yeah. Original. Uh, with English subtitles. And there is a good mixture. A lot of it is in English. Like, not just dubbed over looking like a bad kung fu movie or anything. It is actually legitimately English for a good portion of it. But for the portion that's not, it is definitely German. And it helps to have the subtitles. Yes. <laughs> And, uh, you know, this movie, at the end, I was like, this movie seems f- so familiar. And I was like, what does it make me uh, think of? And it reminds me of kind of like Train of Busan. But, like, yeah. if the dad were a zombie that still had his maternal or paternal. Is it paternal? Paternal. 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 Uh, Sorry, instincts. I have, like, a branch or something oh. in my eye. Oh, or, no. you know, eyelash, whatever. Oh. This is fine. <laughs> I feel you. <ya. laughs> But, um, 
for those of you watching, just seeing me stick my finger straight into my <laughs> yeah. eye continuously. <laughs> this is fine. <laughs> totally fine. Uh, but overall, I thought that the movie had pretty good ex- uh, suspense. Um, you know, I was rooting for the characters that they wanted us to root for. Mm-hmm. And I really wanted the bad guys to lose. And it was mm-hmm. satisfying I guess it's kind of sad that some of the passengers got turned when they were kind of innocent. You mean all but two? Yes. Yep. <laughs> they were, well, the others the were that either got killed. turned or dead. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but it, it still was a satisfying ending. Mostly. I mean, it, it pulls out your heartstrings a little bit. They killed two dogs. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, the first one. Also, you didn't warn me about that, Grinna. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, for those watching, they might. Uh, she she knows this person, so she's not like doing <laughs> it to a to a, a random listener. <laughs> but anyway. no, they know how I feel about dogs, and they should have warned me. So thanks. Yeah. <laughs> But it's fine. It's fine. Um, but um, but yeah. I mean, just like in Train of Busan, the the parent dies. <laughs> it's like a Disney movie. Oh. It's nothing new. We grew up watching this kind of thing. Maybe not quite as brutal. Yeah, it's like it. it it's a sad ending, but it's still. It's sad that the kid had to be the one to do it. Yeah. And it's kind of funny because, like, in Train of Busan, the genders are just, like, flipped. So that, yeah. that's kind of a funny Yeah, instead of a, a daughter, it's a son. Yeah, yeah, I'd actually be kind of curious if the, the director Though. or writer was, like, inspired by Train of Busan. Though, the kid was insanely competent. Yeah. Super smart, very clever kid, very brave. Love the kid. Kid's my favorite. <laughs> yeah, the kid is a great character. It's like... I love when they make kids competent because mm-hmm. the majority of kids, well, I mean, like the majority of people, aren't stupid. So it's just quit, quit making kids seem so like I don't know. I I there's a good balance to reach. Like yeah. yes, they are kids. Let them be kids, but at the same time they understand a lot more than a lot of people give them credit for. Yeah. So they can be competent and they're they tend to be very resilient too. Of course, there are all kinds. There are some that don't handle uh different difficult situations very well, but there are others kind of like this kid that handle them a little too well <laughs> almost like he just went with it well i mean you could argue the same thing with adults but i yeah. think in a lot of movies they are just like oh it's the kids so we're going to have them do kid stuff yeah like they forget that they're intelligent human beings they're smaller humans yeah Yep. But anyway, so I really appreciated the mm-hmm. level of role yes. that they gave the kid and the competency. So that was pretty cool. Yes. But we never yeah. actually saw what happened to the girl that they almost shot. Like the mom oh, saved yeah. her from the terrorist dude. I guess she got turned brutally. She probably either got turned but or she ended up getting killed anyway. Mm-hmm. That's sad yeah. to think about. Yeah. But her kid lived. <laughs> <laughs> the one we care about lived. Hooray! <laughs> they showed the other girl for all of two minutes. So, you know. Yeah. <laughs> we yeah. couldn't get as attached to her. It was as bad as that scene, sounds. Though. As bad as it sounds. We couldn't really get as attached to her. They showed the other boy throughout the whole movie. Yeah. <laughs> so. But anyways... So that's that's all I got for entertainment. I don't have a whole lot else to add. It's a pretty straightforward movie. Just a different take on a creature feature. It, it's always nice to have those creature features that, you know, kind of turn the, the cliche a little bit on its head. A little bit. Uh, it was almost a back-to-basics type 
creature feature. And I appreciate that because lately a lot of vampire movies have really glorified them and really romanticized them. And that's not really what like the original lore and everything was. It yeah. used to be like a don't go out at night. <laughs> this is a cautionary tale type thing. They are terrifying creatures. They lust for blood and death. <laughs> like, they are bad things. Bad things will happen if you encounter one. <laughs> yeah. And I think a lot of people kind of forget that with a lot of the other movies that have come out recently. So it's nice to see one of the old-fashioned type vampires come back. It's really cool. And the effects were really good. So I also give it a six. The effects were great. Oh, the little twitchy ears. That was a nice The twitchy ears were touch. awesome. Yeah. That was really interesting. And the transformations did happen kind of fast. I'm a little surprised at that. A little bit. But it was kind of cool. And it made sense. I mean, they're vampires. Just accelerated healing is part of the territory. So it kind of makes sense. Yeah. And you get to see the varied transformations, too. Like, the, it goes in stages. At first, it's mostly just, like, the teeth and then kind of the eyes. And the ears start to change. And some had hair, but she had already lost all of hers. And she had already gotten pretty pale, too, from not being able to go in the sunlight. But all the others still had their normal skin tones at the time. Because they had been newly turned. So it was just different seeing the different stages and levels. And as they fed more and more, they started to look less and less human. You know, I am kind of sad that it was revealed. I don't know if it was the, the listener or if it was the movie summary. But I kind of hate that we went into it knowing it was a creature feature because oh, that was it Netflix starts itself. Okay. Because the image that they posted... For the movie, quit hitting the thing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so the image that Netflix had used for, like, the movie poster type thing that they always put, the thumbnail, it showed her. Yeah, it's in, like... In her form. Yeah, because <laughs> so, it's like in the movie they started off showing, making you infer that she has probably leukemia, because they say, like, a blood disease. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, surprise, she's actually a vampire. She's trying to reverse it. Yeah. So yeah. Kind so, of a cool twist. Yeah. Netflix could have put a different thumbnail of maybe like her holding the sun or, you know, the, the terrorists pointing the guns on the plane or something else because that they would kind of make sense. Yeah. There's a hijacking on a plane like Blood Red Sky. They're in a plane. Like, that would make sense. And then there's that twist. Yeah. That would have been nice. But no. Nope. They had to go and spoil it. Rude. <laughs> but it's whatever. <laughs> it's fine. Some people want to know when they're getting into a creature feature versus just a really intense, suspenseful movie. So. Whatever. It's fine. I don't appreciate, however, a couple of different plot holes. Especially concerning the communications on the plane and the military personnel being stupid. I don't like it. It also is part of the realism scale, but it does affect entertainment for sure. Yeah, it was frustrating at yeah. the end. Mm -hmm. Where it's like the guy was obviously telling them the situation. The kid was telling them the situation. And they're like, oh no, you're, you're the terrorist, even though you told us you're not. I mean, I can understand them not fully believing the kid's thing, that he's in shock and everything, but you could also equate terrorists with monsters in a kid's mind. But so like, him telling them that Farid helped him and looked after him and was helping him and the others and trying to keep everything together... You would think that would tip them off. Along with his missing hand, he held up the stub of an arm. <laughs> <laughs> but that's more realism than entertainment. I just get annoyed when the authority figures like police or military and all are just completely incompetent and stupid. <laughs> yeah. It's cliche. And I'm done. If we could 
please move past it. Please. In this genre, at least. Please. I know movies got a movie, but... <clears throat> yeah, well, in this case, it's like the military could be completely competent and it would mm -hmm. still make it work. Yes. Like, they were a very small part of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> Just annoying. So, but that's... That's mostly what I had to say for entertainment. It is a good movie. It's very... I like the the different reactions and things. It's it's a very intense movie. Did I say my rating? And did you say yeah. your rating? Yeah. We both gave it a six. Oh, we both... Okay. Girl. Sorry, I'm... Please move on to realism <laughs> before you lose it completely. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, it, it is one of those movies where... I could have taken or left it, like... I'm glad I saw it. It's like, I'm glad I saw it, but I don't feel like I would have missed out on it if I never saw it. So, it's kind of... Eh. It, I mean, it's a good one to pass the time. Again, I like the effects. They were interesting. Yeah. Yeah, like, it, it's not a bad movie by any means, but it it didn't... Some of the characters add anything to were my life. frustrating. Yeah. And I think that also kind of impacted the... Yeah, I think so, too. Yeah. But for a uh, realism, uh, I give it... Oh, it's tough. Because it's like, overall, they whoever either was the writer or the director or producer, they had a pretty decent uh, base knowledge of airplanes. Because there is a level of detail that this movie took that most movies don't even like scratch on but so it's like in that place i gave it a six but i but the military is so dumb that that's what ranked it down but yeah so like for example there's a part where one of the windows gets shot out and so the oxygen masks drop and they're of course losing uh, pressure and the co-pilot um who's one of the the terrorists he takes the plane back over and he dives down if i recall right i believe they're supposed to go down to ten thousand feet and then at that because the oxygen mask, they actually give you a limited amount of oxygen and it gives you just enough time to uh, dip down to where you're at a level that uh, you can breathe. Um, so that was a, a very interesting um, little detail that they, it's like they didn't have to add it, but they they did. And um, the, the only other thing I have to dispute though is the whole reason why there's a pilot and a co-pilot is there's controls that each of them have. And while they could, one person could technically drive the plane, it's not really designed for that. And it would be very difficult. So the, the one guy landing the plane with one arm, even if it's on autopilot and it's set to the coordinates and stuff, I, I'm... Landing's a whole other beast. I yeah. Feel like... Now, I would imagine that they would design it for safety reasons, if nothing else, so that one person could land the plane if they had to in an emergency situation, like the other was incapacitated for whatever reason. Yeah, but... But... Missing one like, hand. Yeah, I... Mm, <laughs> bit of a stretch there. Especially since he had no previous flight experience whatsoever. <laughs> Yeah, because it's like you're landing a plane. It's very heavy. Like, I I listened to Black Box Down, which is a podcast about plane crashes. And there's, you know, Why whenever you do there's... that to yourself? I know. Uh, I have a fear of airplanes. And so I listened to that. Let's to make it worse. Ironically make me... No, it actually makes me feel safer, ironically. Uh, because I tell you, like, what the industry did to prevent that from happening okay, well, again. well, that would help, I guess. But, um... <laughs> But anyways, Let's uh, all the ways it it's like whenever crash. like there's engine failure or or they're having issues with the engine working properly, they essentially have to put their full weight into the the steering wheel to like make sure that um, they have control of the plane. So it's like if if it's that difficult for two men that are fully capacitated and like have fully functioning limbs to do that. Then one person with one hand 
landing the plane. I don't know. I just dispute the possibility of that. I'm not saying it's impossible. Um, I'm just not enough of a plane expert to definitively say yay or nay. But I dispute it as uh, being super possible. So what's your overall rating for realism? Is it just the solid six? Yeah. Okay. It, yeah, I was kind of thinking a 5 or a 5.5, but I don't know. The little details that they... Oh, no, you're going to right away. I can see it on your face. What are you rating it, Jess? I'll wait till you're done. No, I'm done. Go for it. Okay. What is it? <laughs> Tell me. I would like to preface this by saying I did like this movie. <laughs> Yeah, realism doesn't really have to do with whether or not we like a movie. It impacts my view entertainment-wise. Sometimes for me. But it doesn't necessarily completely destroy the entertainment value. It just affects it for me. Being said, I give it a two. Holy crap! Why? While some of the reactions to things are fairly accurate and varied, there are other reactions to other scenarios that are completely wrong and like don't the one make guy sense. Tossing the gun and make huge plot holes. Huge plot holes. There's so many. But one of the biggest, apart from the freaking firing the gun everywhere on the goddamn plane, is windows everywhere is that when the car breaks down for the mom and her husband the dad with their infant son in a very very cold area the engine was overheating they weren't entirely sure why i don't know if he just wasn't mechanically inclined or they just didn't know what was going on it happens i know from experience so, however, they were not in Texas in the middle of summer. They were in, I think, Germany. Yeah. It looked or it sounded like, if we're going by the subtitles, and it was in like a very cold month. There was snow everywhere. Like several like everywhere. Six inches, yeah, maybe. several inches of snow everywhere, and it was currently snowing lightly, but still snowing. They get out of the car. They check the engine. Of course, it's overheating. There's steam and everything coming up. And he walks a little ways away from the car and just to try to get a signal, there's nothing. They're in the middle of nowhere. They could have, and it would have been much safer to, because it was a dark area with, like, no lights on the road or anything. It's like the woods. <laughs> They're in the middle of nowhere. They didn't stay in the car altogether, trying to keep warm, waiting for the engine to cool off, and then limp it along until it started to overheat again, just watching the heat gauge until everything, you know, started to creep up a bit and then stop for a little while, let it cool, that kind of thing. No, he decided to walk further down the road to try to get a signal or flag someone down or whatever. There was no one on the road. Clearly. They hadn't shown us anyone. There didn't seem to be any tracks in the road from recent cars that had passed by or anything like that. So I don't know what his reasoning was there. It did not make any sense whatsoever. It would not have taken long for the engine to have cooled. And they didn't have any thumping or anything to signal that anything was, like, broken, like the water pump or anything like that. So, and even then, you still could limp it if, depending on the part that was broken, you could still limp it along until, you know, it started to heat too much and then stop and rinse and repeat. Then she started trying to find him because he had been gone a while. One, it's going to take... A while until you reach an area with signal, most likely. And you have an infant strapped to your front. And it's cold and snowing and probably getting colder as it is night. Two, she didn't walk that far away from the vehicle before she saw a trail branching off. You could still see the vehicle in the background. Yeah. 
She walked that direction and then saw blood. Well, first she saw a derelict home. Like, dilapidated, falling apart, should be condemned, home. (laughs) (laughs) Accurate. And instead of being like, my husband is smart enough not to go to the home that's clearly broken down and going to fall apart at any moment, which clearly does not have a working phone, because no one in their right mind would live here. (laughs) No. She continues to go forward and then sees the blood and decides that it's a good idea to continue to investigate. Yeah. With her infant son strapped to her chest. No. (laughs) No. It doesn't make sense. It really doesn't. And then she gets out of there after being attacked and bitten and starting to change and doesn't tell anyone Which makes sense. It really does. She wants to protect herself and her son. Especially her son. And she knows, because that's how humans are, if she tells someone, she would more likely end up as a test subject in some lab in an undisclosed location than anyone actually helping her. And God knows what would happen to her kid. So, I get that. That makes sense. What also doesn't make sense, though, (laughs) is that the terrorist group, you would want the most level-headed, calm people on your team. Yes, tough people, for sure. Not disputing that. But you don't want someone who's super trigger-happy or wanting to kill everyone in an insanely brutal way for no reason. You want them to have all their faculties. Just saying. Because they might turn on you. Yes. You don't know. Yeah. Yes. You want to trust them. So the dude they called Eight Ball, (laughs) who went all stab happy. And gun happy. And gun happy. On the air air marshal um, on the plane, one of them. That should have been their first clue. The problem is, if that should have been their first clue if they didn't know him well before. The problem is, they had a previous experience with him in a different location. They talked about it later in the movie. Why in the ever-living hell did they hire him for this one? On a plane. I just, I, I can't. I, I cannot. Man, I should have rated mine a five. <laughs> <laughs> so another issue I have is when the guy loses his hand, when he gets bit. I do appreciate that one of them was smart enough to make a tourniquet first. That was intelligent and it was accurate for him to survive. He needed to have a tourniquet above where they were going to remove. (laughs) That was good. And using the phone cord was a good call. I appreciate that. They also shoved a cloth in his mouth so he could bite down on it and not swallow his tongue. I appreciate that as well. What I don't appreciate is that he was perfectly fine afterwards. Seconds afterwards, they removed his hand brutally and not cleanly, by the way. (laughs) It was not clean. It was literally a hack job. (laughs) With an axe. And he was up and moving. No issue with blood loss the entire time. No issue of shock. Nothing. No ashen face. No dizziness. No sweating. Because even mentally, that's going to F with you. Yeah, and how I would care. he be able to land a plane? If, exactly. Yeah, if I don't care blood. how much adrenaline is pumping through your body. That's actually a temporary thing. And you will come down off it and you will be extremely fatigued afterward. Yeah. So for him to deal with all of this after and be perfectly fine, by the way, <laughs> then land the plane and then proceed to sit there for hours and be okay. With the military grilling him and making him keep his other hand on his head. 
and him telling them the same things over and over and over. I'm calling BS on the whole thing. Yeah. So, is this movie entertaining for me? Yes. Very. I enjoyed it. I'm glad I saw it. Is it realistic? Hell no. <laughs> I even left out the fact that there are vampires. <laughs> well, we're supposed to. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But completely ignoring vampires and what they do and how they do it, ignoring that part entirely, is the rest of the movie realistic? No. <laughs> yeah, that makes me want to modify my realism Go scale to a five. <laughs> but I do really appreciate the little details that they added of realism on like the yes. airplane stuff. But yeah, the other stuff, now that you're saying it, I'm like, well... They didn't uh, research or look into that much. I am surprised that they had in their magazine that no one ever really looks at on the plane where the cargo holds are listed. I think that's pretty normal. I'm not sure. But again, most people don't really look at those. The kid was smart to look, to look at, at that. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to have to look at that the next time I'm on a plane. Because I know they do have a diagram of the plane where the exits are. Well, yeah, I know they have the exits clearly marked. Mm -hmm. Which, I guess, most planes, from what I understand, are supposed to have some kind of ramp from the cargo hold as well in an emergency situation or something. So I guess that kind of makes sense to have them marked on the thing, but... It probably depends on the size of the plane really and the I'm capacity. Because sure. mm -hmm. it was, like... It's a. It was a plane that could carry like a, a couple it hundred was, people. Yeah, they said there were two hundred people on the plane. I don't know about two hundred people. Yeah, I feel like there were maybe fifty. Yeah, maybe. And it seemed to change pretty frequently. Pretty frequently. Yeah, they definitely took advantage of like the section offs mm -hmm. that they you could yeah. do on an airplane. Yeah. But. But I, I feel like there's no way in hell there were 200 people on that plane. No. <laughs> yeah. There might have been 200 seats. Might have been 200 seats. Yeah. Uh, no way in hell there were 200 people. Yeah. Just saying. But. But that's the tea on that. <laughs> but, well, if, uh... If you guys have seen the movie, let us know your thoughts. Uh, did you like their take on vampires? Did you like that it was has they uh, the main character was you know a good person, but not I wouldn't go so far as to say an antihero. I mean, I but. admired her strength and her determination. She really, really fought against her nature. Her very nature to feed on basically anything that moved yeah. to take care of her son, who was technically by that point a food source. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. But um, I think it's that. Instincts are strong with this one. <laughs> I think it's worth at least one watch. Um, there are characters slash scenes that are frustrating at times but um and kind looking of looking at you a, wall street dude yeah save me i'll pay you sweetie do you see an operating room on this plane yeah <laughs> yeah and i mean We've there are some ace bandages and then there are some brutal <laughs> scenes with the the dogs getting killed yeah that's especially the up. second one mm -hmm. and then the way that they handled the the girl, that yeah. was that was that kind of made me uh, uncomfortable. But I mean, is the hijackers for the most part acted fairly realistically? They had at least around the most people. of them had kind of a code. They most of them looked like they felt kind of uncomfortable when Eight Ball picked the girl, the young girl. To take up there to threaten her to open the door. But they also didn't really say anything. Because, yeah. I mean, you were right when we were watching. I mean, they are planning on blowing them all up anyway. Yeah, it's kind of a... It's like, it is different from, like, killing them with your own hands versus, like, blowing... Up close and personal versus yeah. you're but away still, and removed from the situation. But still, yeah, rough. Yeah. 
but but anyways well if you enjoyed the review and if you liked the movie um or even if you didn't like the view uh, uh movie if you liked the review <laughs> <laughs> please uh, like this video and subscribe and we would appreciate it if you would uh, sh share this with at least one person yes and if you have any other recommendations on movies you'd like us to watch and review, please let us know down in the comments below or send us a direct message, whichever you prefer. And in the meantime, guys, stay safe and stay spooky. Bye! Bye.